Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we have Champions League coverage in Bayern Munich's 2-0 win over PSG, putting Bayern through 3-0 on aggregate. In a game which genuinely was a really enjoyable game to watch, there wasn't always necessarily the quality which we might hope for, but I thought it was really intriguing the way that both teams were setting up from a tactical point of view, and it was a very, very even game. So, despite the fact that this game was actually separated by a bigger scoreline, I thought it was a much more even contest than what we saw in the first leg, and genuinely just really enjoyable. So I want to talk about both teams here. Normally, we kind of mainly focus on the winners, which would be Bayern. However, PSG more than contributed to this game. Gaultier kind of changed the tactics from what we saw in the first leg into more of a 5-3-2 formation, and PSG competed much better. So I want to talk about that initially. And then, of course, we will come on to Bayern because they ultimately won the game and went through. So we'll start with PSG on the ball here. And the first thing that I want to note is that because this was quite an even game, we didn't see a ton of attacking opportunities in the first half, which meant that we didn't see a lot of shots, which as a result meant that we didn't see too many goal kicks. Now, when there's less goal kicks in a game, it makes it more difficult to press. Say, for example, if you've got a goal kick here, Bayern can commit to pressing nice and high up the pitch, whereas in open play, Bayern didn't seem quite as keen to do that. So that's an interesting side point, which does actually end up being quite important in the game, but we'll come on to that later. So PSG in open play here are looking to build possession in a back three shape, pretty obvious when you're playing with three centre-backs, and initially, it looks like Bayern are going to be able to match it man for man because they have a front three of Chupo Moting, Kingsley Komen, and Muziala. So it did look like on paper that if Bayern wanted to, they could go all the way up and really squeeze the pitch. However, they didn't really do that, and one of the reasons for this was because of uh, a combination of either Verratti or Vitinha dropping much deeper, almost into a back four at times. But not into a back four where the centre-backs really split wide, just literally into a really narrow back four. And it just asks this question of Thomas Muller. Does Thomas Muller want to come out and press? Or not? Because if he does, if he presses, he's leaving this room in behind for someone else to get into, which is a dangerous game to play against PSG. But also, if he doesn't go tight, then Verratti's got quality. What it done as a result was it kind of meant that Bayern are kind of here, but they're not really getting there on the ball. And then, kind of as a result, Bayern went, OK, the press isn't really working in the first half here. Let's just drop a yard. So Bayern drop a yard, but that's going to do something to them because they're still playing quite a high defensive line, much higher than what we've got on screen here, all the way up the pitch. A much higher line than what we've got here. Um, but I just can't really display it properly. But because they've got a high defensive line, combined with the fact that they are now not putting too much pressure on the ball, we did see situations where PSG could go long quite direct. A couple of times in the first half, Marquinhos was looking for a long ball over the top for Kylian Mbappe. Looking to get him 1v1 with Sommer, of course, we know Mbappe's threat. Most dangerous player on the planet right now, certainly up there. Really good player, so that's what PSG were trying to do, go long and get him in behind. However, Upa Meccano, defensively, was phenomenal. I think it's probably the best performance I've ever seen from him live, personally watching him. Really good. Really, really good. Kept up with Mbappe well, was physical with him, didn't really give him a moment's peace, didn't let him get away really, didn't let him get into his stride. Really good game from Upa Meccano and kept Mbappe quite quiet. So as a result, you know, PSG can't constantly use that long ball. Yes, it was a threat, but they can't use it all the time. They want to be a possession team. And again, in the first half, they did have a decent amount of possession. And it came because, like I said, Bayern have just dropped a couple of yards. The front four are being pretty passive, certainly this front three, which means that PSG can build in this three shape here with Verratti just in front of them. And then what we saw also was Messi dropping deeper. And it becomes almost a three back through here. And then a diamond in midfield with Messi, Vitinha, Ruiz and Verratti. It could also be a box at times like this. Lots of rotations in this midfield area. And then the wingbacks, Mendes and Hakimi pushed all the way up. And this is a really good shape from PSG. It's a shape which, you know, a lot of top teams are using at the moment. Some sort of back three and then either a box or a diamond in midfield. Then the front three. And this worked for PSG. Because Bayern and Ischia were being quite passive with two promoting, Muziala and Koeman. PSG were able to step forward get the ball into midfield, where they do have ridiculous technical quality. Verratti, Ruiz, Vitinha and Messi, incredible. Incredibly technically gifted on the ball, which means that they can take the ball in tight spaces, turn and then get out of the defence. When you add in the fact that they also have the extra man, because Bayern only had three midfielders in this area, PSG did have some joy. Um, much more than what they did in the first leg. And they are able to get the ball into Messi. The problem was, then the lack of forward players. Hakimi and Mendes done a really good job of getting high and wide. I thought their battles up against Davies and Stanisic were really good to watch, and I really enjoyed those battles out wide. However, there just wasn't enough attacking threat in the middle. Let's say Hakimi would beat Davies here, which we did see on a couple of occasions. He's looking up, and Mbappe's the only player in there. 
being marked by two centre-backs plus also a full-back. It was just a bit of a mismatch. We didn't see enough attacking intent from the likes of Vitinha and even Messi to really get into these dangerous areas. So as a result, PSG were progressing the ball quite nicely in the first half, but lacking threat and Bayern defended well, so PSG didn't really create anything. So yeah, PSG played well, but couldn't quite get there in the final third, unlike Bayern. So before we continue with the video, I want to talk to you guys about where I got this shirt from, and you probably guessed it, jerseyfifa.com. They have kindly sponsored today's video, and also sent me a load of free shirts for me to check out myself, and I can now really vouch for the quality of these products. They have loads of shirts to offer on the website, so if you are interested, head to the link in the description down below, and check out Jersey FIFA for yourself. So, as we would expect from Bayern, they also had plenty of the ball in this game, and looked to try and dominate, take control, and again, looked very good. Again, they also faced a side which wasn't really putting them under an intense press. There were times when PSG went for it and really squeezed nice and high, but I wouldn't say it was a high-pressing game plan from PSG, not particularly, which allowed Bayern to build possession in a back three. And again, some of this becomes because of the lack of goal kicks in the game. With PSG not creating in the final third, they couldn't then, you know, give Bayern a goal kick and then squeeze nice and high, so Bayern could build possession and play from the back. Where, like I said, they used a back three like this, allowing Alfonso Davies to push all the way forward as we see so often. Koeman is providing the width on the right. We've got Kimmich playing as a pivot. And then Goretzka, Muziala pushing right up in line with Thomas Muller. And then Chupa Moting up top. So where his PSG shape was a bit more of a diamond, it was a bit more balanced in midfield, it's a bit deeper. I would call this a 3-1-3-3 three, three, three shape. And the difference here is for PSG, the, likes, the midfielders were a bit deeper, creating this diamond. Whereas for Bayern... They were pushed much higher at the pitch. And this is what is going to give Bayern the ability to kind of edge the game, basically. So it starts because Messi and Mbappe, you know, aren't the most intense players out of possession, meaning that the wide centre backs can step forward with the ball. Something which De Ligt in particular looked to do a lot. From here, what's he going to do? Pass to Muziala. Because Muziala, right now, you know, there's a lot of talk about being one of the best young players in the world. Pedri, Gavi, Bellingham, they all get spoken about. Muziala for me isn't in the conversation of best young players in the world. He's just one of the best players in the world. The talent this guy has is astonishing. It's really frightening for him to have this amount of talent at this age. He's up against Vitinha here. Vitinha's a good player. But Muziala made ball progression in this area look so, so easy. Vitinha doesn't know where to get tight or step off a yard. And it allows Muziala basically 15 yards where he's progressing the ball at times almost unchallenged. And what that does is it just drags Bayern up the pitch and forces PSG all the way back, back into these defensive situations. And obviously that's going to make life really hard for PSG, because now they're being forced back, and we know that Bayern have a lot of quality in these areas. What we also saw on this side of the pitch was again this matchup of uh, the fullback and the wingback, Davies up against Hakimi. Again, a really good battle. I thought going this way, Davies did have the edge. I think his extra physique at times allowed him to kind of muscle his way past Hakimi, get into dangerous areas. And uh, unlike PSG, Bayern did have a bit more of a threat in the box with Chupo promoting. So that was good. And also down this side of the pitch, Komen. Athletically, he didn't have the beating of Nuno Mendes. However, at times with his dribbling, a bit of skill, throwing that in a bit of subtlety to his game, there were situations where he could get past Mendes and into these dangerous areas. And as a result, Bayern just looked like they had that extra little bit of edge. I think both teams were kind of quite similar in their attacking setup, in their principles, with the shape of a 3-4-3 versus a 3-1-3-3. They're both pretty similar shapes. Bayern just had that extra little subtlety, that extra little sparkle of quality in the final third, which PSG lacked. They also had the extra numbers forward in these areas, and it made Bayern, for me, the better team in the game, the more dominating team. However, with PSG playing in this back five, it meant that even when Bayern were creating a, like a moment of quality, they were still getting crowded out, basically. So let's say Komen here in this wide area does beat Mendes and get past him. Marquinhos is there to come and deal with it. So that is what PSG done really well. And again, for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, it's a really even game. Both teams are progressing the ball quite nicely. But in the attacking third, the defences were on top. So as I was saying there, it was a really even first half and even first hour. It was really tight. However, as we can see on screen, it didn't end up that way. Bayern did end up comfortable winners. What was the difference? Well, I'm going to go back to it. Goal kicks. Sounds really odd. What we saw in the first half was a lack of tempo. When you have a lack of tempo as an attacking team, it means that when you get into dangerous areas, you don't necessarily get the shot off. If you don't get a shot off, you don't win corners, right? Corners, goal kicks. It doesn't matter. Even goal kicks, of course, they are for the opposition. What it still provides you with is a set point where the goalkeeper has the ball on the goal kick. We can choose that that is where we are now going to try and press from. We know the structure. A team is more structured when they have a goal kick, so it is easier to squeeze high and press. 
Whereas in open play, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So what we saw in the first half, as crazy as it sounds, was a lack of goal kicks, which meant that Bayern couldn't use that. They couldn't use the trigger to go press really high. It was always controlled possession. It was never particularly high pressing or transitioning football, which meant it was quite a cagey affair. What we saw in the second half, though, was Bayern come out with a bit of extra tempo and PSG come out a little bit slow. They've been forced into a couple of changes with injury, which I haven't actually got on the board, but, you know, you guys know the changes. And what this does is it means that Bayern now have that extra attacking impetus. Now, when you have that extra attacking intensity, you get the ball forward a bit quicker. So those pockets that I was talking about with Muziala, he's doing it even better. A bit quicker, a bit quicker, and then you get into the final third and create chances. Sometimes it leads to goal kicks, and that is literally what we saw for the goal. It leads to a goal kick. I believe Bayern win the corner, the ball comes into the box, and is headed behind for a goal kick. What this does, though, is it gives you a point from where you can then press. And we can see the PSG in their setup here. They tend to go for something like a 2-4 when they play out from the back. Despite using a back three, they'll often move one of the centre-backs out of the way. And build with a double pivot and the two centre-backs. What this now does, whereas previously in the game, PSG were playing with three players in this area, so it's difficult for Bayern to go press them. Now it gives Bayern a set situation where they know, okay, we now know exactly how PSG are going to set up. Like I said, goal kicks are often much more structured for the team in possession. It gave Bayern the opportunity to press. Bayern turned the ball over, scored a goal, and that puts them 1-0 up. As a result, after that, PSG then push further forward. Bayern sit off in a bit more of a 4-4-2, and then they're able to play counter-attacking football, and that kind of sees the game out for them. But I think that ability, again, it's, I can't believe I'm talking about goal kicks so much. But just seeing that greater attacking intensity in the second half led to more goal kicks. And these goal kicks give you the opportunity to press. We can see this a little bit better by using Once Video Analyzer Pro, which you guys can check out using the link in the description down below. I really recommend it. What we can see now, though, is that because of, um, PSG have had a goal kick, we can see them in their shape here. So uh, let me just select the players real quick. We can see that we've got these two PSG midfielders here and here. And then we have the two centre-backs here and here. But we can see that it's a 2-2 shape. Whereas before, PSG were much more fluid and often building possession with a back three, goal kicks gave Bayern the opportunity to press. And I mean, in terms of pressing, there are Bayern players literally everywhere. These Bayern players are squeezing super high, and it is going to lead to a turnover. So actually, quite surprisingly, it was Verratti that gives the ball away for this turnover. It's not something we usually expect from Verratti. And ultimately, it did kind of cost this team the game. It's not something we would normally see, but it comes from this opportunity for Bayern to press higher. And then a good bit of decision making in the final third between these two players here means that Bayern get the ball through and score. Simple as that. That was Bayern taking the lead. That was 1-0. And like I said, after that, Bayern were able to sit a little bit deeper in a bit more of a compact 4-4-2, restrict the spaces for PSG. Then they're bringing on pure quality from the bench with players like Cancelo, Sane, Gnabry. Pure quality coming on from the bench. Sadio Mane as well. And it allows Bayern to go on to win the game. And that is how Bayern won the game. That is how Nagelsmann won the game. Like I said, it was a really, really entertaining match. I thought both teams offered a lot in possession. Looked good. A bit of a lack of cutting edge in the final third. Although Bayern kind of rectified that in the second half. And really good game, but over the two legs, Bayern were the better team, they deserve to go through. So, yeah, that's all I've got to say for today's video. Let me know your thoughts, though. What did you think were the big differences between the first half and the second half? Who was the better team? Who let you down a little bit performance-wise? Which players disappointed you? All of that, let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.